Hey guys, it's John here from Sonic Drive Studio. Thank you so much for tuning into this channel. It's time for another metal guitar tone tutorial. Last week I uploaded a video and uh, it's called The New Brutal and it's a video with my new uh, ESP LTD guitar. It's a Stefan Carpenter signature model. He's the guitarist for the Deftones. And it's a great guitar. It has passive pickups and it has a Seymour Duncan JB in the bridge, which has a very articulate and aggressive sound. And you can watch the full song playthrough video on my channel. It's the most recent upload before this video. First, let's take a listen to a couple of sections of the song. And then I'm going to show you which settings I used. Let's start off with the main riff. <laughs> So that's a huge, bouncy and groovy riff. And as you can hear, the guitar sound huge, but very articulate as well. Then we're going to check out the next section, which is a very uh, speedy sort of thrash metal riff. So as you can hear, the sound is very big because the low end is huge, but at the same time it's very defined. You can hear every note and you can kind of really hear the strings on the guitar. Now let's check out the chorus part, which has more kind of melodic chords going on. So these tones also work very well for uh, parts like those. And let's also check out a small section of the bridge. Like I said before, if you want to check out the full song, just go to my channel and look for The New Brutal. Alright, so how did I achieve these tones? Well, it wasn't hard at all. First I tracked these parts with my XFX3, and it sounded great. But uh, I wanted to see how it sounded with Helix Native, so I tried that, and in the end I think I got even better results. Um, of course, it's impossible to do a direct comparison because in this case I'm using different amp models, so it will never sound the same. Both are amazing units, but um, Helix is just amazing. It just fits in the mix very well. I love the mid-range, I love the lows, I love the highs, it's all good. So I'm going to open up one of the rhythm channels here and go to the Helix Native plugin. Very simple setup, as you can see. And as I've demonstrated in previous tutorials, I always do my cab IRs in an external plugin. In this case, it's Nadir by Ignite Amps, because it's just easier for browsing. Of course, you can also load up the cabs in Helix Native or in your Helix itself without a problem. All right, so we're starting off the chain with the input gate. As always, the decay is set to the fastest setting, 10 milliseconds. Threshold is set to minus 70. So that's all for the gate. Then I'm going into a pre-EQ block and I'm using this to basically kind of uh, shape the tone of the guitar going into the amp. So for example, you can use this if your guitar sounds a little bit too muddy or if it's a little bit too bassy. So what I'm doing here is just removing a little bit of low end and uh, I'm boosting some mids at around 1.3k and I'm also boosting the highs here and maybe some level two. Now let's compare the sound with the pre-equalizer off and then on, so you can hear how it enhances the sound. Ow. 
But look what happens when we turn the EQ on again. So it sounds a bit brighter, it has a bit more gain, and it sounds more articulate. You can hear all the different notes being played more. So that's great. So uh, it's a very powerful way to shape and enhance your guitar tone. Don't underestimate the power of pre-EQ. Then let's go over to the amp block. As you can see here, I'm using the Line 6 Badonk amp again. It can sound very tight, it can sound articulate, it has everything I need for a great, huge metal crunch. As I've said before in previous videos, as I use this amp a lot. So these are the settings that I use. A couple of important things to note is that I turn down the depth almost all the way. I have it set to 0.1, just to retain a little bit of that low end thump. But uh, be careful with the depth control on this amp because it can be very overbearing. Presence is cranked up quite high to 7.9 and treble is cranked up high to 7 as well. Mids are turned down to 4.3 and bass is set to 5. Now what we can do for fun and for comparison is just uh, add another amp lock here and see how this sounds with the default settings. So this is the Badonk amp with the default settings. <laughs> As you can hear, it sounds quite bassy and muddy. And these are the settings that I use. So much brighter, as you can hear, and a bit tighter as well. The default settings aren't always the best place to start. So we have a lot more presence, a bit more treble, and some other small tweaks. And from there on, we're going into the uh, IR loader. And I'm using the Ownhammer 412 ORN M25 speaker. And this can be found in the Heavy Hitters Collection Volume 1. It's basically my number one favorite IR for huge, huge metal tones. If I need like a very chunky uh, low end and an articulate top end, I always choose this one. You've probably seen me use this in previous videos as well. And I just went to the quick start folder and picked out the own Hummer 1 file, as I almost always do. So it's a very easy way to get a good tone. Just go to your own Hammer folder, go to the quick start folder, and pick your mix. And there you go. And I'm using the Verb Suite Classics plugin by Slate and Liquid Sonics for some uh, very subtle room reverb. So we have almost nothing going on on the processing side here. Um, we're going into the Slate Digital Virtual Channel from the Virtual Console Collection here, just for some very subtle coloring. And then we're going into the FGS, which is basically an SSL EQ simulation. And I'm only using this to cut lows under 90 Hz. That's all that I'm doing here. So all of the sound is coming from Helix and the Ownhammer IR. Sounds pretty awesome, right? So that's all for the rhythm tones. Then in the bridge, there is a lead part. Let's check out this section. So it's a very simple part, and I didn't want it to go to the forefront. I needed it to go to the background. So the settings here are almost exactly the same as the rhythm tones. I think I dialed down the presence a little bit and the treble as well. The EQ is turned off, and I've added a flanger. So that's all. For the IR, I used the same cabinet, but this time I used the prog mix, also from the quick start folder. It has a little bit more of a MIDI sound, which is good for leads. Now let's check out the processing on this channel. Same thing as before, the virtual channel from VCC, then some EQ, and I'm just using this to kind of cut some lows here, and also filter out all the low end under about 164 hertz. And then with the Air EQ Air module here, I'm cutting out all the highs above about 5K. So that's kind of... Uh, making sure that the guitars kind of go back to the background. 
I can uh, let you hear what this does by turning this off and on. <laughs> So it's essentially making the guitars a bit more lo-fi. The highs are tamed and the lows are tamed. This makes the guitars go deeper into the background instead of kind of getting in the way of the rhythm guitars, which we don't want. Okay guys, that's all for this tutorial, quick and simple. If you have any questions, just leave a comment in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. Please hit subscribe and the bell next to it and follow us on facebook.com slash sonicdrivestudio to stay up to date on all our videos and other cool things. Thanks and see you in the next video.